The Greenpeace organization grew from a small anti-war group formed in 1971 in Vancouver to an international organization with five ships, 2.8 million supporters, 27 national and regional offices, and a presence in 41 nations. The organization adheres strictly to non-violent confrontational tactics inspired to Mahatma Gandhi and Martin Luther King Jr. Among its thousands of protests, Greenpeace activists have infiltrated nuclear test sites, blocked ocean-going barges from dumping radioactive waste, and shielded whales from the harpoons of whaling ships. In this last case, the protest tactics also involve the use of motorized inflatable lifeboats to shield whales from harpoons, shifting so the Moby Dick image of heroic whalers to one of the heroic ecologists risking their lives to save the gentle giants of the sea. In 1975, during Greenpeace's first protest, a Russian factory whaling ship fired a harpoon dangerously close to one of the zodiacs used by the protesters, who exposed the atrocities committed by the whalers to the whole world. The incident touched off a media frenzy and caught the world's attention. The fight to save the whales changed that day, and it dramatically changed the political terrain for commercial fishing and whaling operations. This is a short documentary to show what happened that day, the 26th of June, 1975. The Bostock is dead ahead about uh, three miles, four miles I guess now. Uh... Those events launched the modern environmental movement to protect wild nature in which continues to this day, 40-some years later. I have a clue what to think of us. I mean, what is this? We were like the Trojan horse. We would just come up like a bunch of goofy guys, but we had a hidden power to expose them to the whole world. How close would you say that here is one is being? And the crews of both the killer boats have gathered on the stern of the deck, and they're watching as well as the whale is being pulled into the into the uh, slipway or whatever it's called. I can see them turning the whales over, flensing them and gutting them on the deck. Hell of a mess. Just a hell of a mess. We decided that we would follow the next killer boats when they left the ship to go out on their further hunt. The idea had been that Bob and Paul would position themselves in front of the harpoon boat. I would photograph from the side and Fred Easton would film with his Bolex 16 millimeter from a distance from the side so we could get the whaling ship and the, and the protesters in the shot. Well, Robert jumped into my boat and off we went. There's two videos going to the water, Fred Easton and Pat Moore in one for film footage, George Karotli in the other, and presumably Rex Weiler. We pulled the killer boat and then uh, there was a part of eight or nine sperm whales. So we start going zigzag, zigzag. When the whales turned toward us, everybody thought, okay, they recognize us as a shield, which is why we were there. Then we saw the harpoon gunner leave the harpoon gun and walk up to the wheelhouse. But then the gunner came back down and he took position again. So we realized, okay, he is under orders to take his shot no matter what. And then I started doing zigzag. And uh, he was following. Uh, occasionally, he glanced back, and I see he was following back and forth. And at that very moment, this explosion erupted. I didn't get it on tape, but it was a loud boom, a lot of smoke. The gunner took his shot. He had a clear shot right over the zodiac to the whale, and it went over Hunter's head maybe 15 feet. Something better I'll turn around and then I thought that cape was snap. They just shot the harpoon. I don't know if they hit, I don't see any blood. Right there, a few feet. Oh, six feet maybe. It was pretty damn close. And it didn't land harmlessly in the water, 
the harpoon hit a female uh, sperm whale. The, the, the sea was suddenly a frenzy of blood and foam, and this uh, cable from the harpoon was like a knife up and down in the water. And we're getting as close as we can to take photographs. And at a certain point, the whales had come around to help the female, which obviously the whalers knew that they would do this. A perfect clear sight of the bull. <laughs> the bull obviously was very angry. <laughs> and you can see it was like a torpedo. You cannot tell it's coming towards us or the boat. <laughs> The head of this whale rises out of the water. And we could just see this whale looking. Uh, there was a moment of recognition. It, it was very interesting to us that the whale did not attack us. The whale was thrashing against the whaling ship. The whale could have destroyed us in a zodiac, but it never came for us. It never tried to hurt us. I've always wondered, what, did the whale know that we were not the enemy, that we were the, we were their friends? And the gunner just swung the gun and got the bull too. Out of the other side of the boat. Wow, I don't know. I can't. I don't have words to describe it. Um, it was just a cold feeling. It was like being at a funeral and a celebration at the same time. You know, you wanted to cheer that we saved some, but our hearts were broken. There were there were some dead ones. It was the moment I think at which we we made our promise. We'll be back.